The idea to carve a tunnel through this mountain actually began about 100 years ago, 50 years before this tunnel actually opened. The, after decades of extensive planning and designing, the Eisenhower bore, as they eventually called it, opened up for the first time to traffic March 8, 1973. It was a huge mining operation, a major engineering feat to build such an infrastructure in what was considered to be bad rock. It was a mining operation well ahead of its time, blasting a tunnel through the middle of a mountain at 11,000 feet in elevation. But this was the era of sending humans to the moon, so why not through solid rock? Construction began in 1968 with men and machines powering forward in all sorts of weather conditions. It was a painstaking endeavor to carve out a tunnel 50 feet high and 45 feet wide to create a quick and easy connection between Denver and the western slope of Colorado. CDOT has identified it as a historic district, mainly based on its engineering um, and its place in state and national history. History documented in photos and newspapers over a five-year period. At the height of its construction in the early 1970s, over 11,000 workers were employed. They worked in three shifts, 24 hours a day, six days a week. It's a connector between the eastern part of the state and the western part of the state. It would soon become Colorado's iconic stretch of highway. Underneath the Continental Divide, the Eisenhower Johnson Memorial Tunnels, one of the most treacherous stretches of roadways in the country. They may not realize the grit in the work, in the years of political work, the years of engineering ingenuity, if you will, to figure out how to bore through over a mile of bad rock to make this tunnel happen. Instead of going over a mountain, we had to go through a mountain to be able to provide transportation that truly connected Colorado in a way that had never been connected before. The tunnel project came with a price tag of $108 million, which at the time set a record for a federally aided single project. This was the highest vehicular tunnel in its time is definitely breaking ground, or I should say breaking through a mountain underneath the Continental Divide, was truly monumental on every aspect that you can possibly think of. A lot of sweat, a lot of blood, a lot of tears went into the work of making this tunnel happen and opening it up in 1973. Truly a work of art for its time, and even now today, we're standing in the control room of the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnel where they can monitor all the activity outside the tunnel. We know that the Eisenhower part was named for President Eisenhower, but what was the Johnson side named for? Edwin C. Johnson, former governor of Colorado, then senator for 20 years, and then governor again right after he was senator of a great state of Colorado. I'm Jason Luber, Denver 7 at the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnels.